Good morning, ladies. It, I believe it's Tuesday, so, um, but I wanted to give you some idea and to share with you um, what our goal is, you know, at the kitchen table, and that is the Jesus Calling book. So here we are on May 18th. And I love this new version because it's got all the scriptures or we don't have to look it up. But you know what? I still, you still got to look it up because it may, you know, here is my Passion Bible, which is mostly the New Testament. And then here is my Joyce Meyer Bible, which I like, and, and it has everything in it. So, but you got to go to the scripture because even though this is a really, really good starting point, you know, there may be something else around that scripture, you know, and something else that the Lord is speaking to you about and wants to share with you, so, and place in your heart. So let's start with um, uh, May 18th, and one of the things that she says in here is, do not blindly follow your habitual route, or you will miss what I have prepared for you. So I'm going to, first of all, start with Isaiah 50, which it says in here, Isaiah 54, which is in her book, and but I went to my Bible, you know, just to make sure it says the Lord God has given me his servant, the tongue of disciples as one who is taught that I may know how to, to sustain the weary with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple, as one who is taught. That's one of the reasons why I believe the Lord wakes me up so early in the morning, you know, to teach me things. And, you know, he does. He places things in my heart that I can carry with me all day long. So I love it. And I'm fresh in the morning. You know, I'm not tired. I'm not weary from the day. I'm not discouraged from things. So I'm just, it's, it's a new thing. So I like it. But anyway, that's Isaiah 54 that's in here. Then there's uh, a little up from here. I didn't start. I'm not going in random order. God is spirit from John 4, 24. And it says God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. So then I go to my Passion Bible and check it out. John 4, uh, 24. And it says... <clears throat> From now on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. <laughs> so then we meditate on that and think about it. And <clears throat> what is God saying to me? Well, here's my notes. <laughs> so, you know, Jesus is everywhere. You know, um, I grew up with a mom who, he, she was... She was so structured that I knew every day what she was going to do. I knew every day. I knew Monday was wash day. I knew Tuesday was this and Wednesday was that. And um, even to the point where one time she had uh, her aunt come in from New York. And uh, just to make a stop for like a two-day pass through because they were on their way to Miami, I believe. And anyway, so they came, they came down, they told her that she was going to, they were going to be there like at six o'clock on Monday afternoon or evening, but that was her wash day. <laughs> and, and she didn't stop what she was doing. She made them wait and they did. They waited at the house till she was done with her wash and came home. You know, she didn't deviate. And so, you know, that's a, that's a very good thing because I always knew I felt very secure about that. But the Lord has shown me, sometimes I purposely don't, you know, if I get into a structure like that, I'll purposely deviate from it because, I don't know, it's just my nature you know, to just, like, get out of the box. And so I think we, we have to be careful because what does it say? It says, don't do blindly, follow your habitual habit, or you will miss what I've prepared for you. And so God... You know, don't put them in a box. We need to get a little radical. There's some things, you know, I talk about how much I love TBN. And there's different pastors on TBN. There's Joel Osteen. From here, I get a positive uh, attitude. And then there's Andrew Walmack. From here, I, from there, from him, I gather faith. And then there's Joyce Meyer. From her, I gather, you know, it's all in my mind and we need to change our mind. And then there's Joseph Prince who teaches us about communion with the Lord. And then there's Marilyn Hickey, and, you know, she, um, it was through her ministry that I uh, got baptized in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. So, and there's different churches, you know, and there's some 
churches that, you know, they'll just say, well, if you don't say these words, you know, then you're not saved or, you know, we don't believe this. And we, and some of them, you know, they, their belief system is based on what they don't believe. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, I was radically, radically uh, um, healed of congestive heart failure. And I'm telling you, I was in a church and at my church, New Life, and a, and a, and a minister came in that was a healer. And he was knocking everybody out, you know. Well, I never had that happen to me. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, right, you know. So, but I'm, but I'm up in line with all the rest of them because I didn't want to feel stupid, you know. And so I got up there and well, the whole church got up, you know. And so, and everybody's falling down and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, right, you know. And so, but I had been con uh, diagnosed with congestive heart failure recently. And um, he got to me, and he, I'm telling you, he just touched my arm, and I went out like a light. I remember my knees caving in, and I remember going, you know, going down. I don't remember actually hitting the floor, but I woke up on the floor. So I'm here to tell you, you know, that there's radical stuff going on, and we don't want to miss God. You know, there's, listen to the prophets out there. You have to test the spirit. You have to go. You have to read your Bible, you know, and listen you know, to what the Lord is telling you personally. But um, let's get radical, y'all, you know, and because God has so much, don't want to miss him. And it even says here, you know, do not blindly follow your habitual route or you will miss what I have prepared for you. I don't want to miss God. He, there's so many things he has for you and he's in, he's in everything, you know, let's see him. Let's listen for him. Say, Lord, open up my ears. Open up my spirit to your spirit, Lord. Let me hear what you would have to say to me, you know, and why? So that we can pass it on. You know, we got to re-gift, you know, the gifts that he gives us. We're, we we have these gifts to re-gift, you know. And so here's a funny thing. You all know about my bees. And so um, without me kind of, I sat down at my table and here we are. I don't know if you can see. I don't. Maybe you can't see. But uh, let me see. No, I can't do it. But I'm going to show you this. I found this little thing as I was kneeling in prayer this morning. And I'm going to show this to you. Here's a little bee, which I really hadn't thought about it being on here for a long time. And then here's a butterfly. But let me tell you, what you can't see is my whole table. I had just last night put a um, tablecloth on it full of butterflies. <laughs> And then my chair covers are all have bees. So I'm sitting here surrounded by bees and butterflies. And I, I, it says, the best is yet to come. One of the things the Lord has kind of shown me in the spirit is that um, I'm surrounded by butterflies. I might be a little bee, <laughs> but I'm surrounded by butterflies. I'm surrounded by a lot of women here at the kitchen table that are way more, you know, in tune with the Lord than I am. And, but I'm here uh, to encourage everybody. You know, I, I feel like I'm supposed to be an encourager. You know, I'm not, I don't know why. I'm just a little bee, let me tell you. And when I'm talking, I'm talking to myself so many times. And the Lord is speaking to me. And I have to go back and listen to my own videos, you know, because <laughs> I need to learn what it was he was trying to tell me that day. But I feel like sometimes I'm here to encourage the butterflies. They're soaring and they're supposed to soar. But sometimes, you know, even a butterfly can get stuck in a rut, you know. And so, um, so you need, let's soar. All you butterflies, and, and I even know a few eagles, you know. And so, don't get stuck, you know. Don't realize who you are in the Lord and realize your gifts. And let's not get stuck in a rut. Let's get radical. My last thing I'm going to tell you is, I can't tell you how I know this, but I do believe that there's a great awakening coming to Israel. I really do. I, you know, we've all been praying and everything. God's up to, he's always up to something, isn't he? But uh, he, he, he's going to, he, those are his people. And our prayers are going to get answered. We've all been praying for Israel and the United States and, and for, you know, our government and our people and, and for the world, you know. And so um, we have our enemies, you know, but what does God say? I will help you. I will overcome your enemies. So because he's an overcoming God and he is here to help us and read Psalm 91, you know, so um, 
So I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the hearts of the ones that are listening today and that you're going to just open up their spirit in such a mighty and, and radical way, Lord. Radicalize everybody here for the kingdom, you know, for in love and in joy and in, and change their hearts, Father. Just open up their hearts so they can share their heart. Everybody, we all have such a, all these ladies I do know have a good heart. But, Father, help them to even share more. And, Father, just give them favor like they've never had favor before. Let them hear your voice in the morning hours or even in their visions and their dreams and in their daydreams and in their night dreams. And I thank you for what all you're going to do. And I love you guys, but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see you later. Bye.